two moving charges. We have two positive point charges of magnitude Q, and they're down here. Here's one, here's the other. One's moving up, one's moving down, both have the same speed V. Answer the following questions when the charges are aligned. In other words, they're moving, but we want to know what's happening right when they're at this position and this position. Ignore gravity. What is the net magnetic field at point P? What is the magnitude and direction of the magnetic force on the charge at point A? And then what is the magnitude and direction of the electric force on the charge at point A? Then if C squared, where C is the speed of light, equals 1 over mu zero epsilon zero, what is the ratio of the magnetic force to the electric force acting on the charge at point A in terms of the speed of light? What is the net magnetic field at point P? First, we'll find the direction of the magnetic field. We will use the right-hand grip rule and realize that a positive charge moving like this has the same impact on creating a magnetic field as a current in that direction, because a current is just a bunch of charges. So when you align your thumb in that direction and curl your fingers to the right, you'll find that the magnetic field here is into the page, and on this side it would be out of the page. Then you go ahead, please, and do it for the charge at point B, and you should find the same thing. So the magnetic field is out of the page at point P. We will now use the BOS of R law to calculate the magnitude of B and we'll do it for this charge here, and then just double it for the net magnetic field, because the magnitude will be the same for this charge as it's the same distance away. Continuing, we will draw the ds vector for this moving charge. It'll be in a direction of its motion. And then we see over here, this will be r hat. Okay, it points to point P. The magnitude of their cross product will just be ds, right? They're perpendicular and the magnitude of r hat is 1, so we're just left with ds over here. Also, when you do the cross product, you find that the magnetic field is coming out of the page at point P, just like we did with the right-hand grip rule. We're now going to rewrite B O sub r. And what are we doing there? So let's just erase this. We're going to look at the term i ds. We can do a little rearrangement. Another name for I, of course, is dQ dt. So we have dQ dt ds. We move that around a little bit. We have dQ times ds dt. And what's another name for ds dt? Well, that's just velocity. So we have V dQ. So we go ahead and replace ds with V dQ. And then what do we do then? Well, V is constant, so we take V outside r is constant, right, because at this point, remember, we want to find it right at this point, r is equal to d, so that comes outside the integral. And then when we integrate dq, well, we only have one q, and that's little q, so we just go ahead and substitute that in for the integral. So we have mu zero qv over 4 pi d squared. Now that's due just to this charge. We said that the magnetic field due to the charge at point B is the same, and it's even in the same direction, so we just add them, or we double the magnetic field that we found here, and then we get the net magnetic field is mu zero QV over two pi D squared. What is the magnitude and direction of the magnetic force on the charge at point A? What we're going to do is do this in two ways. First, the formal way. The right-hand grip rule shows that the magnetic field at point A, due to this moving charge here, use your right-hand grip rule, and you'll find that the magnetic field is out of the page due to the charge at point B. So that's the magnetic field. We then do the right-hand rule, and that shows us when we put our four fingers in the direction of velocity, face our palm out of the page or curl our fingers to our palm and then extend the thumb, we find the magnetic force is this way, to the right. That's the direction. Another way of doing it is two positive charges moving in opposite directions is just like two currents moving anti-parallel, and we know those repel each other. So you could also just use that argument and say the magnetic force on point A is to the right. They both work, of course. To find the magnitude of the force, well, that's just good old QV cross B, and you can see we're taking the magnitude. 
But what magnetic field do we use? Not the total magnetic field at point P, but the magnetic field to just this guy moving, okay? So what is that? That is mu zero QV over four pi, right over here, times the distance between the two charges. So this time we have to put 2D in there, and you can see we have that. And then we carry out the algebra, and we get mu zero Q squared V squared over 16 pi D squared. What is the magnitude and direction of the electric force on the charge at point A? We go back to Coulomb's law, so you always have to remember stuff you learned earlier, which is just the two charges divided by four pi epsilon zero, the distance between them squared, so both are charge Q, and the distance between the charges is 2D. So you multiply it out, you get Q squared over 16 pi epsilon 0 D squared. If C squared equals 1 over mu 0 epsilon 0, and by the way, we didn't just make that up. This comes out of Maxwell's equations and was one of the things that showed that light is just another type of electromagnetic radiation. But I digress. What is the ratio of the magnetic force to the electric force acting on the charge at point A in terms of the speed of light? Well, we take our ratio right here, okay? And we got this from parts B and C. They go on up there. And then since I never like all these horizontal lines, you just invert this and multiply it by the numerator. That's what we did there. And a lot of stuff cancels out. Then you make the substitution. C squared is 1 over mu 0 epsilon 0. And here's our answer.